Well, that was certainly an episode of wrestling television that happened. I'm Joe Ritham with my review of WWE SmackDown and it's post Elimination Chamber SmackDown. Much more streamlined compared to Raw. Yes, it's an hour shorter, but it's close to sports based wrestling as we will get under Vince McMahon's rule. And let's jump right on into it. We have Reigns, Heyman, and Jay, the J-Man, if you will, arriving. We cut the chamber recaps, and then Reigns is saying, I answered the call, I saved this place, I smashed Daniel Bryan. He loved smashing him repeatedly, on camera, over and over. I turned a lot of things dirty on the show, because of course I did. And he says, it should have been a perfect night, but Edge ruined it. Edge, you have a chance to get out of this and not face me, because if you do, you aren't going to feel good afterwards. I'm going to end you, because that's what he's going to do as the head of the table, and then Brian shows up and says, well, he offered a title shot to whoever won the Elimination Chamber right afterwards. What if you had given somebody more time? Were you afraid I was going to beat you? Because you beat me really quickly, but I had just had a grueling goddamn match. Brian made a good point, but to be fair, Roman is also calling the shot, so that's kind of what heels fucking do. And he says, hey, how about we have a match at Fastlane? Jay says, you're at the back of the line. What the hell? They have an ambush. And then... Uh, Brian gets tossed over the barricade, and then Edge says to Pierce, Hey, so Brian gets a shot at Fastlane, even though I won the Rumble, we need to talk. Sonya, my fucking god, she looks great. Killing it in his GM role. Jay apologizes to Roman, just get the job done, it's perfectly fine. Uh, and if Brian wins uh, against Jay in the main event, he will face Roman at Fastlane. Just say championship match, stop saying title opportunity, it's fucking stupid. Otis and Gable versus Ray and Dominic. Gable heals it up. Imagine what they uh, could have done with Gable if they had used him properly three fucking years ago. I'm not saying that Gable can't be viable to the company, but they've uh, misused him for a lot of fucking years. It's really fucking disappointing. Um, tag Team Wrestling and WWE is fucking dead. Even though the Dusty Cup had some really good matches and, you know, the men and, you know, women's side, they there were some good matches. And there have been good, you know, to great matches on Raw and SmackDown and even on pay-per-views, but... The concept of tag team wrestling as, you know, being something you could build around is just so fucking dead. It's a real shame, because there are talents, you know, as far as individuals, as far as teams just coming together. They can put on some really good goddamn matches, and it's very disappointing, because I do love tag team wrestling when it's done right. So, uh, Splash for three, and a heel Otis and Gable. Interesting. Don't know how far it's going to go, but interesting. I'm still not on Team Otis. But it's probably better that he's a heel because he was too goofy as a babyface, in my opinion. Cole, by the way, said hospital. Did the brain parasites leave his head so he could actually have a coherent thought for the first time in about 15 fucking years? I hate Michael Cole, by the way, and I don't want him on commentary anymore. He ruins everything. Apollo is in the ring, and he's going back to the u Nation that he did, which, you know, was a gimmick that he had. Well, I mean, it was something that he had on the indies. And actually, I've seen pieces of it, like pieces of matches. I'm interested to see what they could do with the heel Apollo Crews here. If he can embrace his heritage and, you know, talk about, like, you know, like, get a good backstory going and everything and talk about the fact that his dad had five wives and just, you know, the fear that his family put into everybody, that was some pretty good stuff. Apollo Crews can be a pretty damn good heel, and I hope they actually do something good with him. I give it till after Mania, and then they fucking pull the plug on it. I hope I'm wrong. He attacks Nakamura. Pearl Harbor job on Nakamura. Will you stop? And then he tries to use the steps, but he stopped. And then the, he has a match with Nakamura. It was well worked. Nakamura is, of course, great, but I knew they weren't going to use him all that well after that performance in the Gauntlet match. I don't mind Nakamura losing to Apollo here. I want Apollo heated up. I just wish they would do more with Nakamura. But anyway, Olympic Slam variation one, two, three. And then Heyman says to Reigns, Brian will get a shot at you if he wins tonight. If he doesn't win, like if there's a double count out or something. Oh, wait, that's exactly what they did. He just didn't have to say that. Live with Ruby versus Tamina with Natty. A snooker physically assaulting another woman. Oh, some things never fucking change. Liv has improved a lot. She really has. Tamina, I don't know what the fuck that winding slam was, but that was really goddamn lame. Tamina getting the victory. Tamina is 43 years old. I'm not saying Tamina shouldn't, you know, be respected a little bit as far as somebody that has come back from multiple injuries and everything, but her time passed at least five fucking years ago. Like, sure, she's a veteran, she spent more time on the bench than she spent in the goddamn ring. Seriously, from coming in in 2009, she's either been off TV a lot or been injured. Sometimes the injury bug bites and it doesn't fucking let go, but Tamina should not be winning over Liv. I like Natty. I want to see Natty do well, but Tamina, I just don't fucking see the end game here. I just see it being fucking boring because Tamina is fucking boring. So anyway, 
Pierce and Sonia are here to introduce Bianca. What is her decision? Here's Reginald to interrupt that and says, oh, if you choose Sasha, you're going to lose. Fortunately, Carmella didn't show up during this. Um, Sasha's here. She kind of runs down. Reginald says, stop getting in my business. And Bianca chooses to face Sasha. It seems like I skipped over quite a bit of that. This was kind of basic. Bianca and Sasha. I don't think they're going to main event night one or two. I don't think they will. I'm not saying they shouldn't. As far as story and everything, as far as ability, these two women can kill it. I'm interested to see where they're going to place them. And they give them 20 minutes. They're going to tell a great goddamn story. Sasha's going to bump like a fucking machine. And Bianca will look like a star. I hope Bianca wins. I don't know. But I think that could be the show-stealing match of the weekend. Corbin and Zayn argue about being uh, underutilized, so to speak. The can and connection. Well, Corbin is a lot like Tom Zink now. And if you know, you know. At least charisma-wise. Zayn and Corbin versus the Street Profits. This match happened and Corbin kept getting upset at the documentary crew that Zayn had getting in the way. And that was pretty much the overriding thing of the whole of the whole match. They kept getting in the way. Montez had a really cool uh, helo over the top. Really nice stuff. And then eventually hit the splash on Zayn. One, two, three. Does it seem like I'm not, you know, focusing on a whole lot of this stuff? There wasn't a lot to really dive into on this. Some of the matches just fucking happened. Brian then says, I don't know if Edge has what it takes to beat Roman. Edge shows up. They, te they tease a match, possibly. I think this match will happen at SummerSlam. I'm all for Edge and Daniel Bryan having a match at SummerSlam. It'd be a dream match. It'd be really good shit. Um, Rollins is here, and Cesaro's in jeans, and what was this? This is weird. He says, why do you always seem to come up short grabbing the ass ring? I may have misunderstood that, and... He says, I have that killer instinct and I can give it to you. He's going to give it to Cesaro repeatedly, on camera. Embrace the vision. Cesaro does that by swinging Rollins a lot. Uh, I never thought I'd see a shirtless Swiss man swinging around a long-haired CrossFit Jesus enthusiast on camera repeatedly again. Delete your search history, kids. This is kind of cool. I kind of wish this match would be, would be happening at Mania. I think they're going to blow it off at Fastlane, even though I think they could kill it with a 20-minute match. Um, but this is pretty good. Brian versus Jay, uh, if Brian wins, he gets an opportunity against, uh, or gets a championship shot at uh, Roman at Fastlane. Jay targets a knee, and then we get a countout. Like, it's not that it was a bad match. I won't say that, but I've seen it before. And it was a double countout. Reigns attacks Brian and chokes him out after spearing him and stuff like that. That's pretty much it right there. It wasn't a bad episode of SmackDown. There just wasn't a lot to sink your teeth into besides it. Heel Apollo Crews, Bianca versus Sasha, I think ought to be pretty good. Everything else... I don't mind the Roman stuff, but now it's starting to get a little bit repetitive. I'm not saying take the title off of him. I'm not saying scrap it, but, you know, just freshen it up a little bit. He is killing it with these promos, but you can only do the same thing for so many times before it gets stale. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.